All right, so this video is intended to be a uh, review for honors chemistry uh, for chapter, whoops, I forgot the H in that, the chapter, uh, chapter one and uh, two test. So I'm going to go over some key things. We've gone over them in class, but if you have any questions, here's my email. If you're not in my class and you have questions, you can always email me and I'll try and help you. That's an easy way to contact me. So first and foremost, rules for significant figures. Uh, chemistry students always kind of have a little trouble with this, so I'll clarify it. First thing is, if you have digits from 1 to 9, they always count. So for example, if I had 647, all those are non-zero digits, so I would say that has three significant figures. Second rule you got to remember, so really the rules are about the zeros. Do the zeros count? First thing I'll tell you is a jail zero counts. What is a jail zero? If I had 607, notice I have a 6 and a 7. A zero is in between two non-zero numbers. Whenever you have zeros that are sandwiched in between non-zero numbers, we call that a jail zero, and it automatically counts. So we would say that has three significant figures. Escape convict zeros do not count. What am I talking about? If I went 47, 0, 0, 0, notice how the 4 and the 7 we know count. The zeros are outside. And if they're outside, if you're not in jail, you're basically an escape convict zero. So therefore, the only number, the true number of sig figs in this is just two. The last rule is intended to make it easy because it's really the decimal that really gets people. And the way it works is, if it has a decimal, we call it the Beyonce rule, famous for her song, to the left, to the left. Mm. Anyway, um, we apply that because we know the zeros to the left of Beyonce do not count. What do I mean by Beyonce? Beyonce is always when you look at a number with a decimal, the leftmost non-zero digit. So for example, if I told you I had 8,410.00. Note the decimal right there. As soon as I see a decimal, I look for Beyonce, the leftmost non-zero number. That's going to be 8. So 8 is Beyonce. Anything to the left, to the left, to the left? No, does not count. Anything to the right? Yes. So that means the 8, the 4, and the 1 automatically counted. The 0, that 0, and that 0 count. So you would say that that has um, 6 significant figures. Okay. So I'm going to apply that rule as we go through some of the sig fig uh, questions that I have. So if you look right here, student measures the volume. If you notice right there, the first thing I see is 0 0.130 liters. I see a decimal. It means I have to find Beyonce. Beyonce is the leftmost non-zero digit. To the left, to the left, mm. no, it doesn't count. To the right, a zero would count. We know the one and the three already count. That zero is going to count, so that's what makes that the three significant figures for that one. Um, and that's basically a way you apply the Beyonce rule. Another example that's not up here, what if I did, how many sig figs is that? Well, the first thing I look for is Beyonce because I see a decimal. So then Beyonce is going to be the 8. No. Yes. We know the 8, 3, and the 2 automatically count. That counts using the Beyonce rule. We would say that has four significant figures. The next question, number 3, asks you to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. Remember, in chemistry, it's just 273 plus Celsius. If they give you Celsius, add 273. If they give you Kelvin, subtract 273. I have Celsius in this problem, so since I'm given Celsius, I add the Celsius, so 273 plus uh, 30 is going to end up as 303 Kelvin. A simple temperature conversion, but you definitely have to know for chemistry. Next thing, metric conversions. Some of you guys had a little trouble with metric conversions. Just remember King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. The base unit is either going to be a little G, a little M, or an L. Because remember, the base unit only has one letter. It doesn't have a prefix because it's the base. So like if you notice right here, when I have 6.2 meters, it means I'm starting right here. All you're doing is bouncing the decimal. I'm starting with M. Notice the little m. I'm going here. I'm going to the right one, two, three places. So that means I bounce the decimal one, two, three. I end up with 6,200 millimeters. Where am I now? Centimeters. So I am starting. If I look right here, I am starting at the C. They're asking me for my base unit. That means I'm going to go 1, 
2 to the left, I get to the base unit. So if I start at 10.56, the decimal starts here, 1, 2. That means I end up with 10.56. All you're doing is counting decimal places to the left or to the right. If you look right here, I start at K. K is right here. I'm going to little c. Little c, little gangster c is right where are we here? Right here. So if I start, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 to the right. So if I have, I start with 11, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 decimals, and then you, or not 5 decimals, I'm sorry, 5 decimal places, and I move it like that. 80.2 milligrams, I'm starting here. I have to end up, when I bounce over, I'm going 6 to the left. So automatically I go 1, 2, now I'm at 0.8, but I still have to go four more decimal places over, so I'm going to end up with four zeros, eight zero two would be my final answer. And so you guys get the idea as far as that goes. Remember, in scientific notation, the key thing is in the proper format means that you only have one decimal or one digit in front of the decimal place. So my target is between the four and the seven. I have to drop a decimal there. Technically, the decimal is right there, which means I go to the left. Anytime you go to the left, it's going to be positive. I count two places. I bounce over. 4.76 times 10 to the second. I look right here. My target is between, whoa, hello. My target is between the 8 and the 4. So my target is between, let me clean this up a little bit. My target is between my 8 and the 4. So if I look, I'm going to go right in between there. My decimal's here. I'm going to end up going five places to the left. So I end up with 8.4 because I go over here five times 10 to the fifth, positive because I'm going to the left. Here, my target is between the eight and the two because that'll give me one digit in front of the decimal. I go two places to the right. I end up with 8.2 uh, times 10 to the negative second. Why the negative second? Because whenever you go to the right, it's negative. Whenever you go to the left, it's going to be positive. Um, number of significant figures in this one. If you notice, I see a decimal. So that means I go using the Beyonce rule. Beyonce is the 3. So if Beyonce is the 3, that means anything to the left doesn't count. Anything to the right does. So that means I have three significant figures. The 3 and the 2 count, and the 0 because of the Beyonce rule counts. Next, uh, percent error. Easy way to remember percent error is just this. Whenever you see actual or accepted value, you know it goes on the top and the bottom. That means I put 22.4 on the top, 22.4 on the bottom. The only other trick is whatever you find in the lab or measured, 24.8 goes there, times 100, and you're good to go. So the trick when you read one of these problems is accepted value goes upstairs and downstairs. The experimental value experiment right there, only goes upstairs, you do your calculations and you're good to go. Perform the following operations, express your answers in the proper number of sig figs. This is all you have to remember. Addition and subtraction before you start, you know it's least decimal places. Decimal places. If it's multiplication or division, looks like this button on your calculator, I'm just kidding, I know you know what it is. It is least sig figs. Boom, shakalaka. Bam, right there. So when I go to do it, if I notice right away, I see multiplication. Before I even start, I do least sig figs. If you look right here, 642 has three significant figures. Uh, 4.0, we don't count the times 10 to the negative fifth. So we're going to just say it's two, two sig figs, because we know that using the Beyonce rule. It's got a decimal, four is a Beyonce, so there you go. So it's got two sig figs and three sig figs. Automatically, I know I can only have two sig figs. When I calculate it, I get 0 .0, 0 0.0.2568. So when I go to round, because that's all sig figs are, this is a system for rounding. I said before I even start, I got to round it at two. So I, can, I start rounding at a non-zero number. So I start here, one non-zero number. Second number after it, I'm going to chop it right there. Anything greater than 5 means I click up. So in this case, I would end up with 0 0.026 would be my rounded answer using sig figs. If you look at B, I see subtraction. Think subtraction, I think decimal places. Before I even start, 
that has two decimal places, that has zero. So when I get my answer on the calculator, it has to be zero decimal places. So I'm going to go on my calculator, I'm going to go 17 minus 3.88 equals 13.12 on my calculator. But remember, zero decimal places, so the correct answer when I'm done, rounded off, is 13. C, if I look at division, division, least decimal places, or I'm sorry, least sig figs. This division's right there. If you notice, I have two sig figs there because of the Beyonce rule. Three sig figs there. Two is smaller. So whatever I do on my calculator, I have to chop it to two significant figures. So let's see here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, six divided by 74.3. And I get a very small number. I get 2.153 and change times 10 to the negative ninth. Ninth. So if you look, I said before I started it could only have two sig figs. So it's easier to do in scientific notation when the number is super small. I go one here, two here, chop. I'm chopping right there. Since that is a five, it means I kick that number up a notch. Anything above five and above, I could get up a notch. I end up with 2.2 times 10 to the negative ninth. I hope this helps. We reviewed it in class, but just sometimes seeing it a second time will help you. If you have any questions or anything like that, let me know. All right? Thanks.